But boy, when you talk to a salesperson that is just not motivated and excited about what it is that they're selling or what it is that they're 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 trying to help you with, boy, I tell you, um, it's hard for you to get excited in terms of buying it. This is the Sales Babble Podcast, episode 203, The Purpose of Sales, an interview with May McCarthy. Welcome to Sales Babble, the podcast that shares selling secrets for non-sellers. And now your host, Pat Helmers. Hello, Sales Babblers. This is Pat Helmers. Many years ago, when I was an engineer at uh, Lucent Bell Labs, um, they were constantly sharing their their mission statements and their goals and things like that. That, quite frankly, I could never relate to, and I could I, I, I couldn't give a, a hoot about. And then when I became a manager, I was actually the person writing those mission statements. And um, and and again, I just kind of felt like it was just a lot of wasted time. But then when I started, when I worked for a startup and we were um, trying to figure out who exactly was our ideal customer and and we had so many possibilities of things, different directions the software would go, it was really important for us to have a clear sense of what our purpose was. And, um, and that was when I came to this great realization that if you don't know where you're going, you can't get there. <laughs> <laughs> that's what purpose is all about. And then the other day I was talking to a sales lady and she was explaining to me um, the struggles that she was having in her business. Really wasn't getting a lot of support from marketing, wasn't really getting a lot of support to make it easier for her to reach out. And she was in a very competitive market. And uh, oh, I asked her, I said, well, what do you think the CEO thinks about this? Because I know it wasn't a very big company. And she's like, I have no idea. Um does the CEO know that um, the direction you want to go in? Have you talked to them about that? No, no, I couldn't do that. I wouldn't. They're 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 not very good at listening. And I saw this as a as another example of where the purpose of the company and the purpose of the employees aren't matching up. That they have two different sets of goals, or there's like a miscommunication or something like that. And which is why I decided to ask May McCarthy to come and visit us here so that she could give her impressions and her ideas on what is the purpose of sales for each of us, and if you're a business owner, for your company, and then lastly, how those two aligned between employees and owners. It's really important to have the right mindset here. So, with no further ado, let's get to it. Welcome, May. Are you ready to babble? I am. <laughs> <laughs> May you believe that purpose brings for profits, that it, you know, using your purpose to drive your company's success is an important thing. And that's, I do. And that's the purpose <laughs> of this call, isn't it? To talk about purpose. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we could be purposeful and speak about purpose. We, we could indeed, but I was looking at this from another point of view, that you say that every company should have a purpose. Isn't that like, it's like, it's like saying every company should have a name? Well, duh, everybody's got a name. Isn't the same thing true about purpose? No, I think a, a lot of companies are very clear on what they do. But I'm not sure that every company believes that it's important to understand why they do what they do. And purpose is the why that the company exists. And if they can be very, very clear, not just internally um, at a management level, but also throughout their entire organization and all of their stakeholders, if everybody's clear on why the company exists and they buy into it, they tend to be more motivated and more innovative and creative in fulfilling the purpose of the company. Consequently, that will translate into more engaged employees, more loyal customers, supportive shareholders, and a more profitable company. Is there proof of that? Well, they did a study. Ernst & Young actually sponsored a study a couple of years ago in the Harvard Business Review. And they surveyed over 450 
notable CEOs. And those that actually had a clearly defined purpose statement, that's different than a mission, it's different than a vision, it's a purpose statement, it's why they exist, actually it tended to be more profitable. Hmm. Okay. So why don't companies then have a clear sense of their purpose? Well, I think more and more of them are beginning to. I don't think that they realized that it was as important. And I don't know when the last time you hired some millennials <laughs> was, but many of them really want to know why why the company's doing what they're doing. And uh, they tend to be more innovative and engaged. I've had six different companies, um, four of which were in technology. And I found that my technical employees um, wanted to know a little bit more about why we were doing what we did. You know, salespeople, when we're out selling and we're engaging in the customer, we get to see some benefits right away um, that we're providing to our customer base. I mean, we know that we're solving a problem. We know that one of the whys that we exist is to help our customers. But as you get further away from getting that wonderful feedback that you get from customers, um, you need to have something else that will motivate those background employees. And it it also helps motivate salespeople. I mean, they want to know that they're doing a great job, that their their company is fulfilling a need, a, a bigger, a bigger reason for existing than just you know, having a fair exchange of value. And so consequently, if you can get people more engaged, fully engaged in doing their work, they tend to do better work, tends to translate into uh, greater innovations and creativity. And consequently, if you've got a better mousetrap to sell, you're going to sell more of them and customers are going to be happier and stay with you longer. Yeah, I'm thinking about there's like a couple different directions we can go with this. You know, how would you measure what a decent purpose is, right? Because people will say, you know, we're here to make money and we're here to serve these kinds of people with these kinds of with these kinds of products or services. Mm-hmm. But, sure. It, but, well, but, but the other side of that, too, is like, and I should, should never ask two questions at once. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what if you work for a company that doesn't really have a how, – how do you define your own personal purpose in the context of that company? Well, personal purpose and – company purpose are two totally different things unless you own the company then it they probably tie in somewhat together so if you're going to work on discovering your personal purpose there's three things that you should do the first thing you should do is write down what you used to do when you were a little kid that you absolutely loved and you had so much fun doing and you lost hours and hours doing it. And, uh, and you just loved it. So write those things down. Describe it. The second thing is to ask people that you know, people that you work with, people that are friends and close family members, ask them what they think you're really good at doing. And then fi- and write all those things down. And then finally, ask yourself that same question. What do you think you're really good at doing? What are your talents? What are your skills? What do you enjoy doing? Then look to see if there are some words or phrases or descriptors that are common to all three areas. For a guy that I know that's a, a, a chief information officer... What he used to do when he was a kid that he loved doing, just loved doing, he used to take apart all the small appliances and and uh, he used to, you know, to go look at all the different wiring, you know, the electricians wiring through the house and they grew up in a, a really old house. He used to ride his bike down to different shops and, and ask different fix-it folks how they were doing what they were doing. I mean, he just loved He was really, really interested in doing that. And so consequently, when he started to grow up and and help his parents in fixing things, he found that he had a real technical knack in addition to using his hands. 
And so consequently, he went through life finding that he enjoyed those kinds of jobs the most. And he ended up getting some technical positions in companies as a chief information officer, but later decided that what he really loved doing was using his hands and he started a plumbing company and now employs more than 20 people. But he loved doing that and other people told him he was good at it. So his purpose was to use his intelligence and his talents to make other people's lives easier. That's why he exists. That's on the personal side. Right. Let's talk on the, the company side. On the company side, sure. In my last company, we used to create software and equipment for large hospital systems to automate their drug distribution process. That's what we did. Right. But the why that we existed was to help save lives. One of the things that we did was we enabled a barcode to be put on every single dose of medication. We had equipment, we had little printers, we had all sorts of different ways to get a barcode on each different type of medication. So we knew that when that medication left our inventory and somehow made it through the hospitals and the clinics and things like that, that eventually it got to a point where it was going to be administered or given to a patient. And before it was given to a patient, the hospital had a device that would scan the barcode to make sure it was the right drug for the right patient. So in essence, by getting a barcode on those drugs, we help save lives. That's why we existed, to help save lives. What we did, of course, is inventory management. So when you have a purpose, it's the why you exist. One when, when great purpose statement that I absolutely love is from the Kellogg's company. You know, they what they do Kellogg's. is manufacture food products. From the right? Ke- from, from, from the Kellogg's yeah, they, company. Yeah, they they manufacture food. They manufacture cereals and all sorts of stuff. But their purpose statement is to help family, nourish families so they can thrive. They nourish families so they can thrive. So let's say you're a sales. That's why they exist. Now, if you were working for a company that had a purpose statement that you felt you were in alignment with, I would work. I would probably work more cheerfully and more energetically for a company that helped families nourish and thrive than I would for a a company that just manufactures food products. It's like what you were saying before, when it came to the personal purpose statement. You would look at the three, you would look at the answers to the three questions that you asked. Mm -hmm. Factor out the commonalities. Right, and for company purpose, you you can do the same thing. You can ask yourself, why does my company exist? Ask your customers, why do you think our cust- what, why do you think our company is such great value to you? Ask your employees, ask your shareholders, ask your vendors. See if there's some common phrases and descriptors in all of those different areas, all those different answers that could help you come up with a why that you exist. I like that. I could look at my list of commonalities, the company's list of commonalities. Let's say I'm, I'm applying to work for there. I'm thinking about taking a position with them. Mm-hmm. Do I align? Sure. Do, I had a, a sales job years and years and years ago with a company that had a product catalog And a customer base that, you know, I didn't really get all that excited about. I knew what they did, but I didn't know why they did it. I didn't know to even ask why they did it. I might have been more motivated had I done that. But I didn't really identify with what I was trying to sell. And I couldn't get excited about it. 
I did okay because I'm a good salesperson, but but I was always looking for that next job because I I just wasn't all that excited. I know a lot of a lot of people share with me that they're working for companies that really don't have a clue what they're doing. And the reason they work for them is that this is the third or fourth company they've been working at, and they none of them have a clue. <laughs> and it's such a struggle. Such yeah, a, for I for think... salespeople, you know, they move and salespeople move jobs every two to three years. Because I think yeah. a lot of the purpose of these companies is I'm just we're just here to get rich. We're, mm. <laughs> you know, for the owners to get rich, to get bought out, you know, to be acquired. They're they're pivoting constantly, right? You know, they don't really have a strong sense of like what their business is. They have an idea and they just kind of take it wherever it'll go that it will make money. So it's such a struggle for salespeople to know. It's such a struggle for salespeople. Yeah, well, if they're clear on what their personal purpose is. You know, my mine from ever since I was about 12 years old was to, you know, help people be successful. And if I did that, I would be successful in return. And it's always worked that way. And what I found was that when I aligned myself, you know, most of, most of my career, I've had my own businesses and employed hundreds of salespeople and customer service people. But, but when I've worked for other people, if I found that the job I had was in alignment with me trying to help people be successful, you know, using all the resources of our company to help people be successful. Yep. Then I found that I enjoyed my job more. Yeah. So find, you know, discovering what your personal purpose is, um, is really helpful in helping you to determine what great company you want to work with and what kind of job you want to have. Right. I love it. I really love it. It's almost like too often we're just not awake to what's going on in our lives. And I don't mean to point fingers because I'm guilty of that too at times. Well, think about when you buy stuff yourself and you're dealing with a salesperson. I mean, somebody that's motivated and excited about what they're doing and really believes in what they're, you know, either the problem they're trying to help you solve or the convenience they're trying to help you uh, experience, um, you could feel that motivation, that excitement. But boy, when you talk to a salesperson that is just not motivated and excited about what it is that they're selling or what it is that they're, they're, they're trying to help you with. Boy, I tell you, um, it's hard for you to get excited in terms of buying it. And there've been countless numbers of salespeople that I've in, encountered who have made it really clear, maybe not necessarily with their words, but definitely with their, you know, um, tone and their body language and their, their aggressiveness that the sale is more important than I am, the customer. And when you've got purpose, when you really realize that your purpose is to somehow, like in in the case of, of Kellogg's, you know, if Kellogg's is selling, if the salesperson is selling to a distributor, and the distributor understands that the purpose of Kellogg's is to help nourish families so they can thrive, then that gets everybody excited about the deal that's being presented or the advertising discount that's being presented or the prominent end cap that the um, salesperson is negotiating with the distributor um, or the the retailer. I mean, it gets it gets everybody excited because they're all doing this in an effort to help fam- to nurse families and help them thrive. It's very different than just selling and pushing food products for a product for a profit. If you could give our listeners some advice that they could take action on 
this week? Well, I think they should discover their their personal purpose and answer those three questions. Number one, what did I do when I was a kid that I absolutely love to do and lost hours and hours and hours? I would suspect if they're salespeople, one of the things that, that's going to come up in that uh, answer column is that they love to tell stories or they they like, you know, helping people achieve something or, or help them with them, with something. Um, then the second thing is to ask other people whose advice you value or whose opinion you value and ask them what they think you're good at. Then finally, the third thing is to ask yourself that same question. You know, what do you think that you're good at doing? And what do you like doing at this age of your life? Yeah. And then see where yeah. those answers, uh, the phrases and the terms and the words that are in common to all three columns. Yeah. That's what I would ask people to do first is to discover their personal purpose. And then if they work for someone else, you know, see how that aligns with what they think the company purpose is. If they own the company or they're an independent salesperson who contracts themselves out to another company, then spend a little time trying to discover what the purpose is for the company. Ask, ask coworkers, ask uh, vendors and suppliers, ask customers, ask other stakeholders, maybe even some shareholders or investors, you know, what they think the reason the company exists, you know, why does it exist? Why are they of such great value to all these different stakeholders? And see if you can come up with a company purpose as well. May, how can people find you online? Oh, they can go to maymccarthy.com. That's M-A-Y-M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y.com. That'll take you to my company business site. And you're the, uh, you got a couple, you have a book out, The Path to Wealth, Seven Spiritual Steps for Financial Abundance. That's on LinkedIn, but you have a new book coming out in March, right? I do. And it's called The Gratitude Formula. Path to Wealth made it to number two on Amazon's bestseller list in personal finance when it came out. Um, I talk a lot about uh, what we can do on a daily basis in terms of goal planning, um, really meeting with ourselves and that inner wisdom that will guide us and direct us towards achieving the goals that we outline. But there's some tips and some tricks that you need to use on a daily basis to describe your goals in such a way to enable your intuition and your subconscious to illuminate possibilities for you to take steps. So that really describes a lot in the path to wealth, the gratitude formula, we revisit that just just very, very briefly. And then we talk about some of the other things that go on in your brain that we need to shift in order to make your brain believe that you believe that it's possible for you to achieve the goals that you have. You know, so often we'll have a goal that's bigger than anything that we've ever achieved before, usually a couple of more zeros on the end of our financial goal, um, or we have a, a something that we want to experience that we've never experienced before. And what ends up happening is because of our past beliefs about what's been possible, we can sometimes put those intuitive messages and 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 those opportunities you know being able to notice opportunities they can get muted because our brain is trying to protect us from failing from that feeling of disappointment that it remembers so well every time we had a goal that we didn't achieve so there's some things that we can do on a repetitive basis to shift those beliefs to enable us to notice possibilities to take steps to achieve any goal that we have so we 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 go a lot into um how that's important how discovering your purpose is important how that can help to 
increase profits, not only for you personally, but also for your company, uh, and a few other wonderful little tidbits and success tips. Excellent. Well, May, thank you very much for visiting us here on Sales Babble. I, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it, too. As we mentioned, May's got a new book coming out in March, and you can find links to that in the show notes at uh, www.salesbabble.com slash 203. And if you got a question or a comment, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Click on the link Babble Me, and that will send a message directly to, to my email. Um, next week, we'll have Brandon Bruce to talk about what's not going right in sales today. Things are changing quickly due to the internet, social media. I could go on and on, and we're going to talk all about that next week. So until then, take care and have a highly successful selling day. Thank you for listening to the Sales Babble podcast. Find us at www.salesbabble.com.